Welcome back there, buds. Today we're going to get started here on this nice little cedar chest that has seen some better days. Start from the top. It's got a lot of the edges are pretty worn on it. Finish is mostly worn off with a lot of those edges. Top's just filled with a lot of deep scratches and gouges. Got to get a lot of those out. And go over here on the sides. Most of the, the sides of the veneers, sides in the front, they don't look terrible. Bottom, they're pretty worn. Get those stripped and sanded. One little repair I see right there. Need to make a few new of these here. Finish that detail off. This here, I think this is just screwed on. We can take that off, clean it up. It's uh, a brushed aluminum or something probably on that. Some type of little metal handle there. Little accent piece. That'll clean up nice. Have the original brass lock on this. No key though. So probably just take that out or make it so that it can't lock so nobody gets stuck in there. So then that inside there, looks like this is bowed down a little. Because when you put that down, that scrapes. So we'll just clean that up. Maybe we'll just do a quick chamfer along that edge. Just keep that from rubbing. Pull that off there. We'll re-glue it. Just uh, maybe clean up that hardware just a little. Yeah, the inside, I mean, it's not bad. A little bit of markings on it. Probably just clean them up, give it a quick, quick scuff sand. There's no finish applied to the inside of a cedar chest. And the finish on this whole piece, we're gonna just do a natural finish. That's what it looks like, all well, like a walnut veneer. And uh, that should clean up pretty good. Probably be a little bit lighter. But uh, yeah, it should be pretty good. I guess here I'll just get started out by stripping it all down, getting the lid off, getting all the hardware off, anything it can come apart. I'll get it apart, see if there's anything that needs to be re-glued, and then uh, strip anything that would need re-stripped, and uh, make that little, new little piece there. We'll take it from there. found a dusty carrot hidden behind that hinge. Never know what you might find her, bud. What do you think, Buck? Do you like this carrot? Do you like to eat a carrot? Yep, yep, yep. Well, as you can see, I got all the hardware stripped, got everything labeled. What I like to do is keep all the screws with whatever piece they're with, keep it all together, 
so I know which is which, which side is which. I like to label what it is. And uh, yeah, for as far as hardware cleanup, I'll just use a little bit of Windex to get the dirt off, get the grime off. I don't, uh, I don't know, buffing used to seem to be a popular thing, but uh, I don't really like to buff uh, the hardware or anything. It's, it just doesn't, doesn't appeal to me or I don't think most people, you know, the shiny, it, it's nice when it looks older, but at least clean. Here's something I always like to find on furniture when I flip it over is a uh, company name and any information of where it came from or where it's made. Uh, it doesn't have a date though. Uh, style number and serial number. Who knows, maybe I could look it up, find out when it was made. My best guess with all the walnut veneer, kind of the art deco look. 40s, 50s, I don't know. What do you think? I'm gonna do here to get the ball rolling today. Just gonna pop these little carving details off. I got one of those all sanded up. And I think it's just uh, probably just some poplar. So I'll take a little scrap of poplar, probably cut this uh, cut this end off there that's yeah, that end that's broke, just cut that off. And just cut a little piece of poplar there. And finish that detail off. Now I have this little little piece cut here that will bring me up to that length. So now I just need to go kind of mark the profile and everything on here. Go ahead, just carve that up to match that up. So I always love any chance I get to hand carve anything, I jump on it. Because that is pretty much how I got into doing woodworking in the first place was my pap. 
aka a grandfather, if you're not from Western PA. He was a great wood carver. And when I was just a little kid, he would hand me a knife <laughs> and say, let's carve, bud. So that's what we did. And he passed a few years ago now, but I have his old wood carving knives. I always love to get them out and carve something with them. They're not the greatest things in the world, and he liked to uh, get a few handmade. It's an old steak knife. Another one here. But uh, yeah, there's just all, this is all, I don't have the heart to throw anything away. Pretty much everything as he left it is all still, still in here. Here's some bigger, bigger knives. There's strop sharpening. Here's a handmade strop we made. A couple files, just some odds and ends. This is a glove so you don't cut yourself, although I always do. Yeah, just a little bit of odds and ends. It's like a, a walk down memory lane every time I open this puppy. So there is uh, this one knife it's just an old steak knife. Just ground it down there. It's not very pretty, but I managed to get it pretty sharp over the years. And uh, I don't know, I just like to use it just because, you know, he made it. Somebody, somebody in Switzerland made that one, but, you know, he made that one. So I like to use that. Every time I'll just, uh, just have like a little diamond sharpening block to sharpen up. I like to just do even strokes. Maybe go ten times that way. And just try to keep you know the angle the same. And I think it's the it's easiest to keep going that way. That way you keep that angle the same and you're not rounding it at all. Just to freshen it up, just take, just take that. That will just get rid of any any burr. Let's freshen it up a bit. Best way to check how sharp a knife is, you know, some people go. You wanna shave all day which yeah I can shave with that but you know or that which yeah you can feel it a little bit the best trick I ever saw the back of your fingernail if you just rest it on there just hit a little bit of an angle and if it digs in that's sharp but if it slides across your nail at all like up here it's not quite as sharp up there. Back here, all the way back, digs right in. So you know that's a pretty good sharp knife.
there you have it there, buds. Got that uh, detail all carved, matched up. Not only did I get to spend the time with tool that my pap used, but also made. It still works pretty good. And I didn't cut myself. So I consider it a win. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick once over sand with a disc sander. And then sand it down by hand. So then that way this will all be done, ready to go. And I can glue those two pieces back on. Got that sanded up. It's my old bud uh, Popcorn Suck would say, that there veneer is as hard as a Methodist minister's pecker there, bud. I don't know if he really said that about veneer, but I uh, heard him say that before. So anyways, I'm going to get this glued on. Got my pin nailer. Going to pin it on. It's going to run a nice little... Um, Nice little bead of glue there. Spread it out a little with my finger. This is on here as you can see to cover up that seam, the veneer seam. It's pretty straight. Give it a squeeze. Alrighty. Do about one, two, three, about every fifth one. One at the bottom for good luck. Should be. Pretty good there. Take a little bit of just a wet rag with water. Clean that glue up. It's easier to clean it when it's wet than dry. Well, now that those had a chance to glue up overnight, they're on there pretty good now. And I just gotta finish sanding the flats here. Well, I got a pretty good start on sanding that there. I still can't get over how hard that veneer is. I don't ever really remember a veneer. That burl top uh, table I did in the other video, that was a pretty hard veneer. I don't know, this one seems like twice as high. It's crazy, but... Uh, that there was burnt through a little bit, but that was like underneath the finish. And it's so weird too because the the veneer, you can see the thickness of the veneer. I mean, that's not burnt through to the under, 
you know, to that cedar underneath there, that's still veneer, but it's running that way. There's like a veneer under this veneer. It's kind of weird. Anyways, so there's a few little, few little dings in this, but being the, you know, the age it is, the antique it is, I'm going to choose on this one to leave that character. You definitely want to maintain some of that character of the piece. Don't want it to look new. Down here, when I sand that, I realized this was all painted. And it looks like underneath there, that's just all poplar. So I might, I want this to be natural up here. I don't know if I'm gonna stain that dark brown, keep that dark brown how it was, or maybe just uh, let it. I don't know, this would be so much lighter than this. I don't think it would look as good. So I think I'm probably gonna end up staining that dark brown, and I might even stain that dark brown then too. That would look pretty good, I think. See on the side. And this just wraps around, that veneer is the same. And that wraps around, that'll be a dark brown. Yeah, I think that'll look pretty good there, bud. Well, I got this just about sanded up here. It's looking pretty good. I decided not to use uh, any stripper on it. I think it's just sometimes more of a mess to clean up than it is. I mean, you're gonna sand it eventually anyway, so why not just sand it? it? Might seem like a little bit more work, but I think in the long run, it just saves you a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of sanding, and you don't have to deal with stripper fumes, and stripper's expensive, and, if you watch my other videos, you know that I don't like strippers. <laughs> so, one little trick here I gotta show you. When you do do this, if you can see this here, pretty good. So, pretty much the key is just to get anywhere you see a shine, just to knock that down, because that is, you know, leftover finish might be a little bit in there, gotta get that out. It's all pretty good. Use my light on my phone here. I can see a little bit of the reflection down in there. There's a little bit of finish left down in there. So if you don't get that finish off, what happens is that the stain just sits on top of that and it doesn't dry properly. So then when you go to put your final finish on, well, if you're using lacquer like I do, it will not dry right and it will crack and yeah, you pretty much have to start over. So if you are using a lacquer, you know, some, some different finishes aren't as finicky, but I think lacquer is the best in my opinion. So anyways, just make sure that I get that finish all out of there. So when I put the sand on, it'll dry okay, and then the finish won't be affected. It's one way that I can get into those little crevices there to get that out. Uh, usually I'll just take a piece, I've been using this for a while now, it's just a piece of oak, scrap piece of wood, and then on my sander I'll just take, just make a little edge on it, so then when you wrap your sandpaper around it, then you can really get it into some of those spots. I could use that, you know, from there, and things like that. But, uh, yeah, that's just one thing that I like to use. So I'll finish this up, get it flipped on its side, and finish up the two sides and be ready for some stain. I've been 
curious what type of finish this is the whole time sanding it because it gets a little bit gummy. I'm wondering if, I think this was probably refinished before at one point, and I'm wondering if they didn't use shellac. So one way to tell is just to uh, put a little bit of alcohol on it, and if it breaks it down, that means that's shellac because that's, uh, that's how you dilute the shellac in the first place. Yeah, it's not really, it's probably a lacquer of varnish. I think that was shellac there. I think this top part, you can usually tell by how shiny it is too. I think that top part, probably somebody just did a quick, uh, you know, just buffed the finish on, just rubbed it on, just to bring it back to life a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely all shellac in there. The difference with shellac to like lacquer, I guess, is uh, just the durability isn't there with shellac. Breaks down really easily. Usually gets discolored, crackles. So at least I know I can just give this a quick wipe down here and just clean up any, make the rest of the sanding easier. Now it's just time to finish cleaning up the back side of that lid. I'll give it all a quick sand and be ready for stain. Now that top's all sanded down there, take a look, I'm sure you could probably see before the amount of little nicks and dings all throughout that. 
since the top is pretty much the focal piece almost of the you know it's the focal part of the piece I would say I'm gonna try to get rid of some a majority of these leave a little but uh, yeah I mean if I, I think if I finish that it might not look so great so just gonna give a whole top a good steaming then we'll uh, give it a good hand sand with the block see how that looks then Okay, I'm gonna let that dry up there. While that dries, I can go ahead and sand around the edge. I got the top all sanded down now to 220 by hand in the block. It's looking pretty good now. The only spot, kind of a little scratch there. Which those are harder to get out. You really can't get those out because that's kind of, you know, damaging the fibers of the wood. Whereas like a dent or a ding is just going to, that'll be able to pop out. That one there, that one's still showing up a little bit. But what I'm going to do now is just give it a good wipe down with some nap to get rid of all the oils or anything that might be left on it. And then uh, we'll be able to see the grain then too and see if, that, if that's going to look good or not. You can see that uh, scratch is still in there pretty good, some of these spots. Not quite sure what I want to do yet. If I just want to finish it as is. I know that veneer is starting to get very thin. Starting to kind of break through around the edges a little. So I don't have a whole lot to work with. 
Should I just leave it? Call it a day? Should I try to steam it again? Because I don't think that's really going to do much. I think what I might do is just try to sand those spots just a little bit more. And then just call it a day. Leave it as is. Don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And I could also just tint the top just a little bit. But I think it's all just going to blend in. I think this side has... It all has its fair share of the markings and the character in there. It's kind of what makes the piece that piece. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. It's going to look a thousand times better than it did. And I think I could just blend that in. Blend those in a little bit with a little bit of tint and the finish. So I think we'll just call it a day on that. Let that dry up. We can get some stain around the edges. Okay, I got everything masked off. Ready to stain. We got that over there. It's looking good. A lot of tape. So what I'm gonna go with on this. Typically don't use this stain, but for something like this, you don't want it to really run. You don't want it to, you know, seep in between the tape or anything like that. Plus, this has much better coverage than like your typical, you know, your typical stain that is very, has a lot more solvents in. This is just a lot of pigment. It's going to cover. And then when you go wipe it off, you're going to be left with a lot of that still on there. And, you know, it's not going to be very uneven how it may typically. Because this poplar, all this trim that I am staying is poplar. And that can act like pine sometimes where you get a lot of unevenness. So, gel stain it is. Let's work it in a good bit with a brush and then give it a little bit of a wipe when I'm done. Well, buds, here we are. Another beautiful spray day. It's time to get spraying. I got the chest on its back. I like to just go through here, just seal everything on the bottom really good. And on this, just get this underside of the lip here real quick before I flip it over. And that one little handle detail on the chest. Go up here. It should look pretty good. So let's get to it.
well buds here we are with another one done I think it turned out all right let me know what you think in the comments make sure you subscribe and follow along so you can see all the future projects we're gonna work on here thanks for watching Thank you.